hi everybody, I'm Jana Basto from ProdPad and I'm here with John Cutler, who is the Head of Product Education and Practice Research at Amplitude. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, measuring to uh, control versus measuring to learn. So John, really interesting to hear your take on that. Yeah, I'm ex super excited to be here. I've got the reminding myself of breakfast. I got the bagels in the back and you're reminding me of like a sunny afternoon. So yeah, I'm super excited to jump into this. Okay, so we're talking about measuring to learn versus measuring to control, which I thought was a really interesting topic and I thought sort of jived with some of the stuff that uh, I've talked about in the past, but I'd love to hear from you why you think this is a difficult topic that product people need to hear about. Yeah, I think that the, um, the problem is how ill-defined this is. So, you know, you'll talk to teams about um, frameworks. Actually, I was, I'm just off doing like a three-hour workshop and I think that up until the last five minutes, someone thought that I was trying to describe a way to measure their team and decide whether their team had done a good job or not. And that's how hard this can be for some people to grapple grapple with, right? So, you know, the, the leader was actually on the call and they're saying, oh, this is gonna be great and we're gonna use OKRs and we're gonna use this North Star thing. And, and I, it made sense to me, and I think that I got what the leader was saying, but part of their team, you know, it was a good two hours and 55 minutes, was sort of cowering in the corner of the Miro board, wondering, you know, what um, what did this mean for them? And would it mean that their team would be sort of, you know, make or not make their particular, you know, goals? And so I think it's a very, very important thing to talk about because um, especially at Amplitude and talking to teams is you see teams terrified to measure anything because they think they'll get it wrong. And then if they don't, if they get it wrong, they won't be able to prove something a hundred percent. And if they can't prove something a hundred percent, you know, then the, the, the somehow like the, the metrics are dangerous and that they're going to be used to sort of backfire on them. So it's, it's sort of about metrics abuse, I think, but it, it is, it does have to do with um, when you're measuring to learn, you're sort of exploring uncertainty and you're hoping to just reduce it just by a bit and be, you know, are we asking better questions to, tomorrow than we did today or today versus yesterday? And when you're measuring to control or goal setting, that's when you get to things like, you know, by the end of this quarter, we think we're going to move this metric from here to here, or, you know, our team's particular thing is to do that. And it's just two different mindsets when it comes to measurement. And so I think it's important to distinguish the two. Right. Okay. So you think that this measuring to control thing is sort of this more of an old school mindset that you're finding some companies are taking Maybe, on? Maybe, but no, I wouldn't say, and, and using the word control probably sets it like that, but I would say that, you know, let's say you're a team. I mean, I've done this. And when I was part of a startup, we're like, Hey, we should have some goals. Like it's going to help hold each other accountable. It's going to kind of keep us focused. Um, and it came from like the healthiest place. So I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with goals, right? Or, or sort of trying to add some like control or alignment to what we're doing. Now, certainly in larger organizations, this just becomes a stick to beat people with. It's like no one, you know, let's just take something like MPS or may, let's just say no one in the company believes in MPS except for the person who dreamed it up, like that they were going to use it three years ago. And you're actually seeing this out there that like teams are measured on their ability to move a metric that no one really believes in and people have a lot of problems with and that's that kind of like that so i would say that the measuring to control go ranges from hey we're in this together we're a team let's set some goals or even like you know i told sharon upstairs who's taking care of our baby that like you know i'm going to exercise for 10 minutes a day that's my goal and it comes from the best place so there's a spectrum of that from that all the way to you know, very, very kind of malicious use of measurement. And then the the measuring to learn is it's almost like um, sort of separate idea about what we're trying to learn. You know, are we trying to learn more about what our customers value? Or are we trying to learn more whether our strategy is clicking the way that we thought it was? And that's the whole idea there is it's very open to um, challenge and open to refining, you know? And then I think that that's a really important point. That's a really good point. And I see that this happens to so many measurements that, that we create. And I say we in terms of like the whole sphere, the whole industry. And yep. we tend to create these things like KPIs. I think we're created from a good place, but then we're used 
as, by management as this stick and people just shied away from them. And then OKRs became the new thing. And now right. they're starting to get a bad rap here and there because they tend to be uh, used in the wrong way. So how do we make sure that uh, this concept of measuring to learn doesn't get turned into something uh, more insidious? Thank you.